you know, the hope of eternal life and of holiness that we was talking about in the previous section kind of overlaps into this one because we ended up by talking about how Jesus drew close to the world of human suffering. I want to go a little bit more into that because that's an awesome thing. We call Jesus the man of sorrows. I love the beautiful icons of Jesus as the man of sorrows. You know, it's a beautiful thing and it's an awesome thing. And usually for most, it's like an ugly thing, man, because pain is ugly. Who hates this? I hate to see people suffer. I hate to see our kids suffer. I hate to see people homeless. I hate to see people hungry. I hate to see people dying. I hate to see fe families breaking up and divorces. I hate to see people suffering from having abortions and seeing the, the negative effect that it's having on our country. I hate to see people suffering from lying and being lied to. Even with the consumerism and the secularism and everything. They're, buy these glasses. They're the best. They'll never break it. Buy them in three weeks. They're broken. You know? And they, they, people don't honor guarantees. People don't honor their word. That don't make me happy. What's beautiful about that? What's beautiful about all the tragedies that's going on? Wars and hatred and, and, and violence and terrorism and all of that. It's terrible. It's terrible without Christ. Life without Christ is not worth living. It's terrible. And Jesus makes, I like to put it like that, I said it earlier, Jesus makes everything that's ugly beautiful. And suffering without Christ is ugly. But Jesus draws close. It's not just he gets into it, he draws close to the world of human suffering. And you know something? We don't like when people get close to us. You know what I'm saying? We all say that we kind of sort of like intimacy and want intimacy and we want people close to us. But man, when push comes to shove, we don't want people close to us. Everybody wants their space. And don't get me wrong, we need space. But when God wants to get close to us, and for those of you who are Catholic watching this, we thrive on the closeness. Him dwelling in our tabernacles, presence at Holy Mass, all the mysteries, the saints, communion, the mystery of the Trinity, all that good stuff. And Jesus, he draws close to the world of human suffering. The Holy Father put it like this. He healed the sick. He consoled the afflicted. He fed the hungry. He freed people from deafness, from blindness, from leprosy, from the devil, and from various physical disabilities. Three times he restored the dead to life. He was sensitive to every human suffering, whether of body or of the soul. Christ drew close above all to the world of human suffering through the fact of having taken this suffering upon him very self. And there's a lot of different ways throughout the history of the church and in the life of the devotion of the people of God in the church to keep this in mind and to, and to recall the depth of the sufferings that Christ took upon himself. And sometimes people scandalized by that. The recent movie, The Passion of the Christ. It's too violent, Hollywood was saying. I don't want to say nothing about that. Hit the most violent of violence, saying that it's too violent. I thought that was pretty cool, actually. You know, because it was. That's because it was. That's because it is. Your suffering is my suffering. My suffering is your suffering. How far we take that? If we really took that far, we'd be sharing more bread. We'd be sharing more money. We'd be sharing more time. We'd be sitting down, walking and talking with people. You wouldn't be worried about my preference. I don't like that. Can I have a different one? Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes we don't like that, and we like to have a different one. But what about a you? A different you? You want a different you? You want a different mother? You want a different father? You want a different family member? You want a different school? You want a different this, a different that? Maybe. But you want a different you? Only Christ can change you. I know I want a different me, but every day, Jesus got more for me. Every day. Jesus got a plan for me to change more and more and more.
Christ drew, drew close above all to the world of human suffering through the fact of having taken this suffering upon him very self. During his public activity, he experienced not only fatigue, homelessness, stop this, the Pope talking, telling the truth. During his public ministry, he experienced not only fatigue, homelessness, misunderstanding, even on part of those closest to him, but more than anything, he became progressively more and more isolated and encircled by hostility and the preparations for putting him to death. Jesus is aware of this and often speaks to his disciples of the suffering and death that await him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and the scribes and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles and they will mock him, spit upon him, scourge him and kill him and after three days he will rise. Jesus goes towards his passion and death with full awareness of the mission that he has to fulfill precisely in this way. Precisely by means of this suffering, he must bring it about that man should not perish but have everlasting life. Precisely by means of his cross, Jesus must strike at the roots of evil. You know how many times he's been saying that? In case you were watching this thing close to close, as, uh, in case you've been watching this thing like scene to scene closely. I usually do like an, 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 anal an analysis when I'm studying and reading as I'm seeing the pattern develop when he strikes at the root of evil. He's, he must have said at least four times already so far. Jesus striking at the roots of human evil. Oh yes. Precisely by means of this suffering, he must bring it about that man should not perish but have eternal life. Precisely by means of his cross, Jesus must strike at the roots of evil, hallelujah, planted in the history of man and in human souls, hallelujah. Precisely by means of his cross, he must accomplish the work of salvation, hallelujah. This work in the plan of eternal love has a redemptive character, a redemptive character, your character. My, my character, my attitude, your attitude. A redemptive attitude? A redemptive attitude? A redemptive character? Redemptive suffering? Say it. Redemptive suffering? Let me hear you say it. Redemptive suffering? Yes. Redemptive suffering. That's the deal. That's the deal. You want it? You got it. I'm not talking about Toyota. I'm talking about Jesus, and he's waiting for me and for you. We do it till we die. We do it till we die.